Okay, so uh, welcome uh, to the uh, Bookmap webinar. We're going to go through uh, some of the basics of what Bookmap is displaying. Uh, we'll do that every day. Uh, and um, we always have uh, new users in here. Uh, and um, uh, reaching out to some of them, uh, who is new here? Uh, if, you, if you can uh, uh, just type uh, in the questions there if you're uh, a new user uh, or new to Bookmap. Uh, and um, uh, you know, use these webinars uh, to your advantage to uh, to go through any of the uh, 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 questions that you have uh, regarding it. Uh, okay, yeah, and we have a few here, uh, so welcome, welcome guys. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, Scott, uh, Billy, uh, John, uh, and uh, and some others here as well. Uh, and uh, uh, good morning, Francisco. Um, and um, Okay. Yeah. No. Great. Uh, so um, let's just start off. So we're going to go through the basics. I'll show you. I'll show you Bookmap, um, so everyone uh, understands what it is, uh, and then we're going to look at the live order flow in the markets uh, because this is how we use the tool, and then uh, answer your uh, any of your questions. All right. So first off, uh, the um, uh, changed a few uh, images here on the uh, on the home page, as you can see. So uh, uh, if you uh, click on Explore uh, on the website here, you'll come into the um, uh, the scrolling page, and you can click on Pricing, and this is where you can find Bookmap. And let me just cover quickly: uh, you get a 14-day trial period here uh, with Bookmap, and there's basically just two versions of Bookmap: Bookmap Basic, Bookmap Advanced. These over here are book are still basic and advanced, but they just come with a DX feed. Uh, the DX feed is um, uh, you getting U.S. equities, and we're not a data provider, uh, but uh, we do have a, a partnership deal uh, with uh, DX Feed to offer uh, Total View Nasdaq, and um, uh, that's the, the package deal here. For is, is more for the uh, equities traders who are new, uh, and they're looking primarily to trade the equities. Okay, if you're equities trader and futures trader, well then I, I would suggest go with one of these over here, Bookmap Basic or Advanced, uh, and then uh, you can add the DX feed uh, as you like as an add-on. Okay, it'll just cost you uh, a few bucks more. It's like uh, ten dollars more or something like that um, over the entire period, I believe. Uh, any, anyway, uh, it'll just be a, a bit more expensive, but you have the flexibility to add or take it away. With these package deals, it's for the quarter. All right, so you get a 14-day trial period with any of these. Uh, the differences between the Bookmap Basic and Advanced uh, are the add-ons, okay? And uh, there are many. Uh, and the ability to trade right from the Bookmap chart, which is a distinct advantage uh, because we're showing all of the liquidity. Uh, let's see, uh, 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 Leon, uh, Lionel, I mean, we're, uh, I think everyone can hear me, uh, so uh, uh, maybe log out and then log back in. I know you're not going to hear that, but uh, let me reply here. Okay. There you go. Um, okay, so that's that's Bookmap uh, Basic and Advanced uh, and DX Feed. You get that 14-day trial period. Uh, then when you come into the user portal, okay, that's uh, here. Uh, you have access to a lot of the free resources, and uh, you see the the, the features uh, videos here. Uh, and then there's a whole bunch of uh, educational videos as well. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter feed gives the most up-to-date information. And then uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, let me cover a few of the um, uh, things here in the YouTube channel uh, because um, uh, we just finished the uh, educational course uh, a week ago, I guess, or a couple weeks ago now. And uh, they're available here. Uh, all of the recorded webinars are here as well. So the way to access them is we'll click on playlists here, okay? And that'll take you to the playlist page. Uh, and then here, uh, you can see all the recorded webinars are here, all right? So click on that, and then uh, you can see that here's Monday's, uh, yesterday's uh, recorded webinar, okay? So let's go back. Uh, other ones, here's the educational course, okay? Parts one through four. 
Uh, and then uh, let's see all the features and components videos uh, for the new guys. Uh, I would recommend going through these and start with the bookmap six overview. All right, so you know what you're looking at in bookmap. Uh, and then um, uh, even before the uh, educational course, I would recommend, uh, highly recommend checking out some of these uh, very short videos uh, that go through uh, market phenomena that we cover here uh, during the webinars and that you'll see in bookmap. Okay, so uh, you get a very uh, concise uh, understanding view of uh, some of that phenomena. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Uh, and then you'll see it repeat again and again in book map. All right. So um, uh, these can be really helpful. So uh, there are many of these. So just start with uh, a couple and, and get to understand them. Okay. So that's the that's the basics here. Uh, and uh, let's see. I didn't read the uh, disclaimer yet. Uh, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Okay, I've covered everything else here. So let's uh, let's move on and let, let's look at book map. Okay, so I've got the ES loaded up here. Um, boy, I think I may take a look at something else today. The NASDAQ has just been moving every day. Uh, so maybe we'll take a look at that. Uh, we wanna, yesterday we really didn't get much movement out of that ES. Or we can maybe take a look at crude. Uh, let's take a quick look over there. Yeah, I, whatever. Um, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll we'll focus on crude here. Uh, unless anyone uh, has a vote here for the Nasdaq, then we can we can take a look at that. Uh, you know, it's FOMC tomorrow, so uh, you know I'm kind of anticipating uh, sideways action anyway. Uh, but um, uh, anyway, let's start off here uh, looking at crude, and um, I'm gonna. Oh, you want to look at Apple? Okay, so that's a possibility. Um, let's jump over there and take a look at, we also have stocks here, so uh, we can take a look at Apple, All right? Anyone in here that, uh, that trades, uh, equities, if you can, uh, raise your hand or, or, you know, type in uh, yes in the questions there, and the equities traders in here, or maybe you trade both. Okay. All right, John, you're uh, you're you're trading the equities, okay? Ex exclusively, John. Uh, just wondering, or are you trading futures as well? Okay, yeah. So you're trading a variety of things. All right. Uh, let's see here. Okay, you want me? Uh, okay, I'll go through the tweet um, uh, in Apple. Uh, so let, let's start off here. Let's we'll. Let's first start with the basics of book map and the in the what what is dis, uh, displaying here uh, and then we'll we'll get into that okay so I, I'm gonna look at crude here uh, and uh, let's first start by taking all the data off the chart except for candlesticks volume bars we'll leave volume on no indicators and no heat map and no best bid and offer. Okay. Okay. So here we are looking at uh, candlestick chart, uh, and, and this is a minute uh, chart here. In fact, let's click on studies configuration. I'll click on candlesticks here, uh, and then you can see it's chosen. And then I'm going to change that to five minutes and close. And then I'm going to zoom out by just using my center mouse wheel to zoom. Okay, so we're looking at a five-minute chart here in crude oil, right? Now, most of us are very familiar, overly familiar, looking at a candlestick chart. Uh, and um, a candlestick chart, though, uh, has uh, uh, really uh, uh, quite a big problem here. Uh, it's showing very, very limited data. And we're making financial decisions based on this kind of data, uh, and uh, that's that's a problem. Uh, so... Um, uh, the um, we don't know where the volume, where the traders are committed. Uh, we don't know where that volume traded, uh, how much, what type, uh, and um, uh, what was the uh, uh, speed uh, of some of the moves. Um, the um, uh, all sorts of data is missing here. 
Okay, so we're going to start to layer the data on uh, in Bookmap, and uh, I'm going to show you uh, how we uh, provide that data to make much more informed trading decisions. Okay, and we're we're also going to show the auction. Okay, that's something that uh, you just don't see uh, in charts, uh, and that's from the limit order book over here, the dome. And most of us are very familiar uh, of a dome, uh, you know, and what it what it is displaying. However, uh, we we've never really seen it on the chart historically. Okay, so this is um, uh, we're going to take advantage of that, and that's going to be uh, the last piece that we're going to add here. So let's just start to add on very simply uh, best bid and offer. Okay, so all I'm looking at here now uh, in Bookmap uh, is my candlestick chart, and I have the historical best bid and offer. Okay, the green line here is the historical bid. The red is the historical offer. Already, I'm getting an understanding, much better understanding of the order flow, uh, and um, I can see, start to see the speed of things, uh, how how quick it took uh, for movement to take uh, uh, effect, and how it might have stopped at certain point uh, points, and then uh, how you get retests uh, back into certain areas uh, within that uh, uh, five-minute period here. All right, so. Um, uh, nice little breakout there in crude up to 47.50. Okay, it's, uh, I imagine we're going to see a lot of liquidity up here at, at the figure, the half figure. Um, so uh, a nice little uh, kind of stop run maybe above here, or or is this initiated buying outside of this range? We're, we're going to determine that in just a minute here. Okay, and that's that's getting into auction market theory. So. Now let's uh, let's start to add on uh, uh, other information here because we just have the best bid and offer historically. Okay, we have no idea about the volume where it traded. Okay, we do have a volume subchart here in Bookmap, as you can see, and uh, it's giving me some information, right? Uh, but um, uh, it's uh, it's not all that detailed. Uh, you know, I, I I still can I can see uh, where the volume is taking place. But I, I don't really um, uh, know uh, where exactly it took place on this candlestick, how much, uh, uh, what was the overall reference uh, within that five-minute time period, and the um, uh, the aggressor. Uh, who's the aggressor? More aggressive uh, market buys or market sells? Okay, so let's add that onto the chart. Okay, now I have a much much completer. Uh, complete picture here of uh, of what's going on within this price activity. Okay, now I can see, and let's zoom in. Click on the hand tool. I'll hover over this area, and I'll just use my center mouse wheel. And let's look at this five minute period here. Okay, between these two bars. All right. Okay. So this is really what occurred here uh, in this candlestick. Okay, we opened here. Okay. Uh, and uh, that was the open, and then we kind of bounced around and, and, and got uh, a few ticks to the high side here. That's your tiny little wick here to the upside, and then um, and then we went sideways for a bit here, and then it sold off pretty quickly here, okay? Uh, and then uh, for the last minute, you can see that uh, we just kind of went sideways here. All right, so, uh, and that's where we ended up closing, all right? So now uh, we can understand uh, the um, uh, exactly where this volume took place, uh, and then we can also start to see with the with the reference here in the dots uh, exactly what type of volume took place too. Okay, so um, let me zoom into this little area here, uh, and I'm going to break up. You can see we start to break apart that data. So all of this data is still here uh, in Bookmap, and as I continue to zoom in, okay. Uh, you know, you can see the granularity. Uh, we're looking at a millisecond level here, which is still quite slow as we zoom in. Uh, and we see this one event that took place here. Now we're down to microsecond views. Okay. So you can get, you can continue to zoom in. Uh, we can get down to nanosecond views. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, we record every single uh, event and, um, uh, we can uh, uh, display it on the chart. Uh, now, uh, that that kind of data is uh, is impressive to see, 
and we can see that uh, you know the kind of spacing here that there's some algorithmic activity that's going on within this area and this is how these markets trade okay so an uh, a red dot is an aggressive sell that hits the bid and takes liquidity off of the best bid uh, and then a um, a market buy is a green dot uh, that takes place on the best offer okay and takes liquidity off of that best offer okay now as i zoom out you note note that uh, you know we're zooming out and we're compressing that timeline here and uh, as i continue to do that there's only so much space to show you where all that trading activity took place okay and uh, we're still giving you the overall aggregation just graphically of what occurred in this area. There was a lot of buying and selling. There was a big flurry of it here. And we display that in a big dot. And in within that dot, you can see the pie display. So about uh, three quarters of this was aggressive selling and about a quarter of it was buying. Okay, so now we have very specific information about what occurred uh, within this time period uh, of five minutes, we can start to see exactly uh, where all of this action took place. All right. Uh, and um, uh, if we uh, want to show a distinction here between what book map is showing you uh, and um, what um, uh, a footprint chart is going to show you. Okay. So, for example, a footprint chart, you might miss some of this detail here. Okay, so we can see that we came down here pretty hard. Okay, they uh, they really got aggressive and they started to uh, hit the bid pretty hard with a lot of aggressive selling. Uh, but within this five minute period, look at these little pullbacks and tests here, retests. This is not going to show up in a footprint chart. Uh, and um, uh, the reason being is that they take this period here. Uh, and they'll show it within a, uh, a bar uh, time frame period or, can or candlestick rotation period. Okay, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's aggregated data, right? And we're showing every single bit of data here, okay? And that is the, the, uh, the problem with those footprint charts uh, is that they aggregate that data, okay? And Bookmap solves that problem uh, by uh, showing every single discrete market event. Uh, but as you zoom out, you still get the overall uh, picture uh, of what occurred here. Okay, so uh, that's uh, that's covering the data, uh, and um, uh, and we can cover maybe if there's any questions about exhaustion, etc., uh, absorption, um, then uh, uh, I'll, I'll be happy to go over all of that. But uh, it's basically a exhaustion. I'm talking about a lack of aggressor. Uh, there is no activity. All right. And you can see that very clearly on the, on the charts. Look at these little points here uh, and here uh, and here. Okay, And that's very typical in a downtrending market and up here as well. Uh, the uh, You have exhaustion on the uh, lower highs. Uh, and then at the lower uh, lows, you'll have all of the uh, trading activity taking place. Okay, M the majority of it. All right. So uh, now there's still... Uh, a problem here, uh, and uh, and that is uh, we don't understand the uh, auction uh, yet. What's what? Where were they bidding and offering? And that's uh, important data. Okay. Now we usually get that data here in the dome, right? Uh, but a dome has a problem. Okay. That problem is that uh, it's fleeting. Uh, so like as I scroll along here, look at how these numbers change, right? And they update and they they fill in uh, and update uh, the previous number that was just there. Okay, so now we've lost the data that was there previously. Okay, so it's uh, uh, it's always changing. These numbers, the liquidity here uh, at these uh, price levels are always changing. Okay, so let's just cover it quickly here. Here's our best bid and offer here. Here's our our um, uh, depth on the offer and our depth on the bid down here. Okay. These are traders providing liquidity with limit orders at these price levels. That's where they want to deal. Okay. And they're always changing. They're adding and pulling liquidity. Uh, and um, uh, that's, uh, it's great to see. It's important data. 
uh, for making uh, insightful trading decisions uh, at that very moment uh, in the current market. Okay, but now uh, you you don't know uh, the problem here is that you don't know where um, uh, that that where they were previously. Uh, what about the areas around them? Uh, how how is this auction really unfolding? Uh, and um, uh, well, Bookmap uh, will solve that with the heat map. Okay, so actually, let's go to the current market here. Nice breakout uh, and uh, a lot of volume on the breakout. We're going to cover this in just a minute here. This is um, uh, initiated buying, and um, uh, we have a strategy uh, that we cover in the uh, uh, Bookmap education all about uh, uh, going over initiated buying as well. Okay, so uh, note the huge volume uh, just in the in the sub chart here, but look at the you know the, these huge volume dots and look at the color of those dots. Okay, so we understand what type of volume it is. Um, okay, so uh, if we look at the current market here, let's look at this auction. Okay, and uh, here here's my auction. Uh, I can see what's going on here. Now you, you can see how quickly these numbers are changing, and we can also see because I have a, a a current order book as bars uh, that uh, gives me the um, uh, graphical representation of the liquidity. So I know right here at uh, 4760 is the highest in the book right now. Okay, or I'm sorry, no, 4780 uh, uh, is the highest, right? But uh, on the um, on the bid, it's it's down here, okay, uh, at 60. All right, so um, and that's good. That's good data, uh, but uh, we don't know. Um, you'd have to keep an eye on that area, remember it, record in your in your head how much was there, uh, and uh, did they add, did they pull, etc. Now with Bookmap, uh, that is all recorded in a heat map. Okay, so in this current window here, this is our best bid and offer currently, and our last traded volume is this number here. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, that's to the right of this white line here, right? Okay, so, and we give a graphical representation in the heat map to that high liquidity. So you can see very quickly high liquidity here, okay? Now you can adjust for it with the uh, contrast configuration button here, uh, and we can look at uh, every single, uh, you know, granular level uh, if, if you like. Uh, it's up to you. Okay, but now we have a lot more detail here. Okay, but we want to target some of that high liquidity. So uh, let's bring up the white cutoff a little bit, and we'll just stop right there. Okay, so now uh, this this data here, uh, that problem uh, in the dome where it's fleeting, uh, and um, uh, you you won't have to remember it any longer because it's recorded. Okay, as this heat map is generated, it is transposed onto the chart historically. So now we understand what this auction looks like. Now we can start to uh, extrapolate and unfold the meaning behind uh, this liquidity here in this auction. Uh, and as I zoom out, uh, it's all recorded here. So now I can see it all. In fact, let me turn on extended heat map. Okay, there we go. Uh, we're seeing all sorts of stuff here and uh, lots of stuff to cover uh, here in oil. Um, but um, uh, this, these were areas of high liquidity up here previously, okay? And they just charged right through it. And that, there's, that's our, their, our figure here. That's what we were looking at, that 47.50, uh, when we had the candlesticks up, right? Okay, and we can see it just charged right up and through that area very quickly. Okay, and we're going to see a flip of the book here uh, and some algorithmic activity pulling price or, you know, uh, that shorter-term high liquidity uh, skews that book and then uh, it's pushing it into higher liquidity uh, further up above. Okay. All right. So anyway, um, yeah, nice, nice sweep of the book here. No, no question. Um, but um, and that's how you usually get to uh, new trading levels is by uh, they just take all the liquidity. Right. Okay. So now uh, this heat map, uh, and I know this looks like a lot of data here. But what we're looking at here uh, is a very, very clear and objective view of how this market uh, unfolded. Okay, it's just this heat map is just showing the auction where, it, where the historical dome. OK, 
okay, where they were bidding and offering. And now we can understand their behavior. These striations that we see here is the adding and pulling of liquidity. Okay, you'll see it. The, the, the heat map will change in the current market window, and then that change is recorded. So when they when you see it like flash, uh, like this area up here, that'll that'll come in as a striation in the uh, in the heat map, as you can see uh, right in these areas here. Okay. All right. So now we can start to gauge the intent of traders. Uh, at these levels and start to understand if they mean business, if they want to trade uh, at these levels or not, right? All, all sorts of information here is now at our fingertips, okay? So that candlestick uh, chart uh, is uh, uh, really uh, lacking qu quite a bit of information. Uh, and uh, now uh, we can see it uh, uh, pretty pretty clearly here. Uh, in fact, let's just, uh, let's just take the candlestick right off the chart. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, let's cover this uh, this this breakout here uh, because uh, it's a it's a nice uh, very solid breakout, uh, and um, uh, this is initiated buying, uh, and uh, uh, someone decided uh, that uh, maybe there was some news. I, I don't know, um, but um, uh, at this moment right here. Uh, let's just zoom in here uh, and check it out. Okay, uh, they just uh, you know we, we just see massive uh, massive buying come into the market. Okay, high liquidity here. We can use this rollover tip tool tip here, and uh, we see there is very high liquidity here for oil. Okay, uh, you know we're looking at uh, uh, you know 200 uh, 300 contracts or you know, 225. Uh, and then uh, we see, uh, uh, you know, uh, that liquidity here. Look, look how uh, we know that the, they stayed in the book, and that 163 contracts. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. 162 contracts of this 194 in the book actually traded. Okay, we know that it's fact. Uh, we can see the liquidity stayed here uh, in the book. Okay, they, these sellers got what they wanted. Uh, they wanted to sell and provide liquidity here at 47, uh, or I'm sorry, here, okay, uh, at 4740, uh, the 194 here, okay, and so far 88 have traded. And as I scroll forward, okay, then we see what uh, what really unfolded here, right? Okay. All right, and uh, so there, there it is. Uh, and we know that they meant business and they stayed in the book, okay? A lot of times what we'll see is that liquidity pulls, okay? So at the last moment, they don't wanna be a, a, a seller up here, right? And uh, we see it happen all the time, okay? And uh, they're, still, they're still buying or they're still you know waiting in the book and getting filled at some of these areas here, okay? Uh, but um, the... Uh, uh, when you'll see what I mean when they when they pull, uh, you know they'll they'll provide that high liquidity and then uh, it'll trade up into that area and then they pull it uh, before though, right? Like uh, at potentially in some of these areas here, like a high liquidity here, uh, 356 and they start pulling it, right? Okay, so when they start pulling like that. Um, then uh, what's going to occur is this is just going to fly up to the next level uh, with uh, some aggressive buying. Okay, and uh, that, that's exactly what happened. Only by a tick. Uh, and then we got a look, couple pullbacks here. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, let's see. Any questions? Uh, of what uh, what book map is showing uh, and um, uh, getting into uh, to reading it and understanding it. Well, let, let, we can just uh, quickly go over uh, longer term liquidity. Okay, so longer term liquidity uh, uh, and um, the with with the intent to trade. We just covered some of that. Uh, is uh, like this area here. Okay, uh, and um, and they stayed in the book. Okay, uh, they wanted to be a seller here and they they got it. You know, they were filled with by buyers. So they were met with buyer, buyers here, okay? The um, uh, longer term liquidity uh, up in these areas as well. Uh, well, 
uh, it's a combination of, of getting filled and pulling as well. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, that allows, uh, you know, the, the, the aggressor uh, to, to trade through these areas even quicker. Um, but um, uh, anyway, uh, uh, the distinction here uh, is longer term liquidity that stays in the book and wants to trade and acts like a magnet uh, because uh, that's where the market can trade. Okay, and uh, the, the auction uh, has already digested that information, okay, because it's been in the book for a long time. So we know that's where the, the sellers are, okay. Well, when we get that that uh, very high liquidity, like areas like this here, okay, that's very short term and usually very aggressive, okay. It, this is actually a few ticks away, uh, but... Um, uh, you know, I'm looking for maybe uh, uh, something even closer, like, you know, one or two ticks away. Um, this is uh, 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 new information for the uh, for the market, okay? Uh, all of a sudden, we see more demand pop into the book that, you know, comes into the auction, and that's going to skew that auction. And uh, now this new high liquidity... Uh, that, that skews the book uh, and the market digests, uh, this re initially repels the uh, price uh, because, uh, you know, there's an imbalance here uh, in the auction uh, and the market has to digest that and it usually digests that by, by reevaluating itself, okay, within the auction uh, and, uh, and traders uh, react to that. Uh, and uh, uh, where this uh, becomes, uh, you know, uh, something to um, understand uh, and, and and integrate into your trading, um, and we're seeing all sorts of stuff in here. Um, the um, uh, the the key here is to make that distinction between that longer term liquidity that stays in the book with the intent to trade, uh, because it's first in first out. They they're waiting in line and they won't give their place up in line to trade. Uh, that's a, that's a disadvantage. Okay, so this uh, uh, shorter term high liquidity that pops in and pops out of the book, uh, it it has price has a reaction to it, uh, but they don't really have the intent to trade because they pull the liquidity. They're here for a short period. Uh, they skew the auction and then it's gone. Okay, so for example, uh, this short term liquidity here uh, is pressing price. Okay. It's skewing the auction and pressing price, and you see uh, how that, um, uh, uh, you know, basically uh, uh, in the end here, we, we trade into this 55 area, which looks to me like it was the intent of this shorter term high liquidity. Okay, and we can see it still following up, right? Uh, and, uh, and pressing price through. Now, of course, uh, combine that with the aggressor, and you have something very powerful. Okay, so if uh, is, is, is when you still see continuation here with that initiated buying, uh, with that little push and skew in the auction, uh, you get some pretty powerful moves. Okay. All right. So what do I mean by I saw a lot of different things in here? Well, uh, just look how uh, you know this is uh, you know one tick away from uh, the best bid, uh, and uh, how they're adding and pulling liquidity here. It, we can match it on both sides as well. I mean, you can see that some of this adding and pulling here actually starts to relate uh, on the other side here, on the uh, on the bid side, and um, these have got to be uh, some of the larger players, okay? Uh, and their algorithmic activity that is uh, skewing the auction, okay? Uh, and look how uh, we know, like in these little areas here and here, uh, it has to be a uh, very, very high uh, probability. It's the uh, the same same player because high liquidity uh, is pulled from this uh, area here at, at 47.50 and then added one tick above. Okay. Uh, so uh, and you can see it, right? Okay. So at the moment it's pulled, it's added one tick below. All right. So that's that algorithm. Anyway. You're going to start to notice all sorts of things uh, within uh, uh, Bookmap, okay? And you're going to start to understand the intent of these traders uh, and what their uh, uh, maybe some of their objectives are. 
Okay, so for example, uh, this is uh, another example here, a very, very aggressive example of a flip of a book. Okay, um, and um, and this is, you know, kind of a little bit larger, larger uh, uh, view uh, of that flip. But they were here at 47.50 uh, and below with very high liquidity. We see, you know, massive amount of buying uh, to the upside here. And then we see them flip over here now uh, to the uh, uh, to the bid. Okay, so from the offer down here to the bid here. Okay. Usually we'll see the flip, an aggressive flip will still, they'll, They'll be at 47.50. You'll see the breakout, uh, and then you'll see them flip from the offer to the bid uh, at the same price level. That's still very aggressive. A lot of times you'll see it uh, uh, maybe just uh, some ticks below, uh, and then they start to fill that area in uh, with high liquidity, right? But uh, in this case, uh, they're up even quite a bit further here, okay, um, from uh, 47.50 to 47.60, so 10 cents higher. Okay. All right. So uh, that's uh, let's let's uh, let's go do our, our current analysis of what's going on. Okay. And this is the uh, process that uh, uh, we used to go through in the in the webinars, and we'll, we'll still go through it, uh, you know, in in future webinars. Uh, but uh, I'm going to change it a little bit and and, and kind of mix it into uh, the. Uh, educational uh, uh, course uh, material. So we usually look at our higher time frames, and then we look at our, our structure, microstructure, okay? Uh, and then we want to very objectively look at the order flow, okay? And, and this will be done very objectively, right, in reading this. And that's going to allow us to pinpoint, you know, entries, exit, and, and trade management. So showing up to the auction, this is the process, okay? Um, uh, we... Uh, uh, want to understand the current configuration of the book, where are the majority of the players, uh, and then uh, we want to understand their behavior, okay, uh, when price approaches them, okay, do they add liquidity, where, is it added below or above uh, where they currently are, that gives us a lot of insight, okay, or are they pulling, and if they are, where are they pulling and adding it to, okay, what about the other side, okay, we want to understand that behavior as well. Okay. And then we want to read the tape. Okay, so uh, uh, let's uh, let's do that process here. Okay, so very quickly and and very easy to do. Current configuration of the book: 4760, majority of the buyers, uh, and uh, yeah, probably uh, you know somewhere around this area here uh, at uh, 78, uh, we see the majority of the sellers. Uh, somewhere around in this area here. Okay, just looking for areas of high liquidity. Okay. That would be the current state of the um, of the auction or the book. Okay. All right. And uh, how do these areas behave when price approaches them? Well, we get that answer right here. You can see that high liquidity was here, and we see a, a nice uh, trading uh, a dot. Uh, and we can zoom in, and we can we know exactly what really occurred here. Okay. Big flurry of activity. Some of it some of it traded. Some of it was pulled, but. Um, uh, yeah, that, that's, there's our answer right there. Okay. So, um, uh, some of the other areas, uh, you know, we'll see them uh, start to pull. Okay. Uh, our flip of the book, pretty aggressive, pretty, pretty aggressive. They, you know, we can see them here at, uh, at 60. And then as price is coming down toward them, look at them bid up. And uh, this is really aggressive. Uh, uh, they were uh, uh, at 60. Now they're at 61. Uh, then up here to uh, to 63. Uh, and then what about those areas? Okay, they started to pull some of it, but they they still stayed in the book here too. Okay, so a, little, a combination of both. But this is this is pretty aggressive. Uh, and um, uh, same same over here. We see a little more pulling. Okay, as price came down and finally tested into that area. Okay. So that's why we, we were making that distinction that, uh, uh, you know, we thought, uh, uh, well, that was another example um, that was back over here. Uh, that algorithm working back and forth, uh, still trying to, it's probably doing this, probably the same algo working it back and forth here, trying to press price higher still. Okay. Uh, but um, anyway, uh, yeah, so they have intent to trade here. 
Okay, that's established. Previously, when price was here, they have intent to trade. Okay, so we can look at that and start to uh, uh, piece that into our uh, our auction uh, right now. Okay, so we want to know: uh, Do they have intent to trade if we come back to that area now? Okay, and we'll get our answer. All right. Now the final piece uh, to uh, we've read the auction now. We've read the intent of the traders at some of these areas. Uh, it, it's there's a lot more to learn there and a lot more to cover. Uh, and it depends on the context of the uh, the auction that gives us the insight uh, to objectively read this order flow. Okay, like here, very very aggressive. What if they uh, stayed at 60, but they instead of adding here. They were, uh, uh, you know, adding down below, and maybe they started to pull some of that liquidity at 60 and added a couple ticks lower. Well, that that would show more bearish behavior here. Okay, this is extremely bullish here, right? And we can see how price reacted to it. Okay, what about the uh, uh, the traded volume? What is what is that telling us here? The transactions, where the transactions really took place. Okay, the time and sales. And basically, we're looking at like a horizontal time and sales here in Bookmap, uh, and um, uh, we can just read the uh, read the dots, uh, and um, uh, just like a footprint chart here, except it's just going to be done graphically, right? Uh, and uh, as I zoom out, I just get an overall feel for it. Well, there's a lot of selling here, okay, uh, but we're still holding structure. Uh, they're still aggressive here in the auction. Uh, but uh, there's been a, just a massive amount of buying uh, up to this point. Uh, and then we start to see sellers uh, start to get more interested in here. Uh, and uh, let's just read uh, this area here, okay, currently uh, in the last maybe uh, 10 minutes. Uh, well, I'm, I'm seeing that lack of aggressive buying here, okay, in these little areas, these little pockets. And this is uh, that... Uh, uh, exhaustion that we're looking at okay we were looking at earlier points of exhaustion okay so we might get a switch here um and um uh you know the uh, we see the you know a lot of transactions taking place at uh, uh some of these points here uh in this trading range at least uh at the lows okay now that doesn't mean the the initiated and the initiated 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 buyers they they may uh step in right now uh, we will see, right? But, um, uh, you know, it's been very bullish so far. But, uh, you know, there's there's some selling in this area here. So we, we also could get a test into that 60 area that we were looking at, okay? But uh, it's, again, if if all of a sudden the uh, those initi initiated buyers uh, jump in here, uh, then this, this picture is going to change really quickly here, okay? And let's read it, okay? It's starting to happen here, but it's looking pretty meager, right? I'm not seeing much, right? We wanna see big green dots, okay? Above this range here, okay? So the range that we're looking at here uh, is uh, this uh, 73 area here, okay? And what's unfolding? Look what just unfolded, okay? There are some, okay? Not much though. And then they started to jump on the other side here uh, on the offer, so uh, uh, we're, 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 uh, we press down lower. Uh, the sellers have an opportunity here to uh, to hit the bid. Uh, maybe we can get down below the swing here at uh, at what is this uh, 66, uh, and then maybe finally get our test of 60. Right? This is the uh, this is the moment for that. Okay. I think we're going to get a test at least to the other side here at 66. Okay, and uh, we can also look at another thing, initiated buyers, they, they can still jump in here because we haven't traded below the POC of this range yet. Okay, so we need to be careful, right? Uh, and uh, that's at 70 here, we can see it, right? We have a CVP, which is our chart range volume profile. Uh, and I can, I can see how much traded here. So 7,000 contracts within this viewable chart range. Okay, all right, let me get to some of your questions here. Um, and uh, as we uh, watch and uh, read this here, 
Okay. All right, so yeah, so the breakout that we see, um, well, I, I, I'm kind of covering this uh, CVP question right now, right? So um, uh, you know, we it's still it's still kind of you know it's not determined yet. I mean, uh, those we need to see the. Uh, um, you know the, the the buyers show up here and they still can right if um uh, once we get below the uh, and start trading below this little um, uh 70 area here uh that's when i think we'll, we'll we'll get that test down into 60 you know 47 60 uh but they're they're holding it here the buyers are still holding it right so uh they they're still they're still remaining in control here uh and uh, if they want uh to um uh, lift the offer uh, and, and maybe get to the a figure up here, get it, get up to 48. Uh, well, th this is their opportunity now. Uh, you know, they they need the if they have the buying uh, pressure. Okay. If not, the sellers are going to push it below 70 here. Okay. And we're going to see some uh, some volume dots uh, on the sell side uh, happen here, and we're going to see the uh, them flip uh, from uh, you know the, maybe they'll pull some of this liquidity here. And they'll be starting to uh, um, add liquidity, high liquidity on the other side of the auction here. Okay, on the offer, aggressive, right? And, and press price down into some of these areas here. Okay, so a few different scenarios. And we're, we're watching and waiting right now. Uh, and uh, the, the key area is this 40, uh, 4770. Okay. All right. Let's see, William. Uh, do you ever filter the volume size? Um, I usually don't. I usually keep it on the uh, 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 default. But uh, what William is talking about is, you know, you you can in Bookmap um, uh, filter uh, your volume dots to fit your trading style. So you can click on Studies Configuration here, and then uh, click on the uh, the volume dots, and that is here. Okay. And uh, the dot size, of course, uh, the transparency of it. Um, there's also f some uh, dots clustering here that you can uh, you can change uh, by a smart uh, algo, uh, by time and by volume, um, or uh, the filtering that uh, William is uh, talking about here is minimum accountable dot size and uh, minimum accountable trade size. I'll start with minimum accountable trade size. Uh, if I input here. Uh, 100 okay probably nothing's going to show and nothing does okay because uh, this is oil uh, if I input 20 okay we, sh we see some dots okay not much uh, but you, these little dots here uh, they represent uh, one order okay one trade for a volume of 20 Okay. And that's the trade size here. That's how you can filter for the trade size. So if you're looking for, you know, your uh, more larger uh, block orders going through the time and sales, that, and this is how you can filter for it. Okay. I usually keep it at one. Uh, and then uh, if I do uh, uh, any filtering, uh, I usually do it here with the minimum accountable dot volume. Okay. And what does that mean? Uh, well, let me, let's first uh, input, um, filter and we'll input 20 okay and I have a lot more dots show ups than uh, than before okay so what this means uh, is uh, uh, so you know basically you're just trying to filter it out to uh, lessen out some of the noise uh, so you have the overall feel of what the what these dots are showing you okay uh, and uh, here's that little fight for that POC so 4770 right that's what we're looking at Okay, and uh, we needed, we still need to see more aggressive selling here. Okay, but this is what this is what pushed it out uh, of that little area right here. Okay, that that selling. Okay. Not too much from the limit order book, uh, to be honest. Okay, a little pressing here, some pressing here clearly. 
right? Okay, so anyway, uh, the as I showed you earlier, uh, when I zoom in uh, to in into these areas here, I'm showing you every single um, event that took place. Okay, now when I have the filter on, uh, what what exactly is this showing me? So it, it's because if I, I start zooming in here, you know, I know there's trades that took place here, but they're not they're not in the view. The reason being is that um, the dot um, uh, minimum dot size uh, filter here. As I zoom out, it's not until within one vertical pixel slice of my uh, screen that uh, shows a, where a volume of 20 contracts traded. Will I get a dot? Okay, uh, and uh, that's that's how it works. Okay, so um, it, it, you know as I continue to zoom out, it's just visually aggregated. Uh, so uh, let's say uh, if I put in 50, you're going to see a lot of these smaller areas here. That condition won't be true. This dot right here uh, won't be uh, uh, 20 or or less. Right? It'll be looking for 50. Okay, these will show up, uh, I imagine. So let's do that. Okay. Yeah, these these show up, but some of the other ones don't. Let's put in 150, okay, all right? So now everything is gone except for these two and some of these over here. Okay. So within these areas, I know that at, at, at least 150 trades um, uh, must have traded, okay? A volume of 150 must have uh, traded here, okay? And I can, I can verify that with my rollover tool and I can hover over the dot and I can see this, this dot is for a volume of 274. And this one here is for 299. Okay. So that's how that works. And uh, I usually just keep it at, um, at uh, the default here. Okay. Okay. Let's see. No, we covered, you know, we covered icebergs yesterday. So uh, it's... It, um, might uh, might be better to uh, if you guys are interested in the icebergs, maybe watch uh, some of yesterday's. Okay, William, I hope that answers your question on uh, on the volume dots. Now, the smart clustering thing is something different. Uh, it filters the volume as well, but uh, uh, it still displays every single trade event. Okay. Okay, yeah, no, I'll go over that uh, uh, Apple uh, tweet in uh, just a minute here, and then that we'll, we'll wrap up on that one, okay? Michael, uh, when I mean flip of the book, um, well, just that it's, it's, a, it's really a, a flip. Usually, uh, um, usually it's, uh, you know, most likely the, the same large players flip from one side to the other, Uh um, and it could be a trap a lot of the times, but it, it's putting a cap on the other side. And uh, now it's going to establish that trading range as, wow, okay, well, you know, this was the the where the responsive uh, uh, sellers were. Now they're responsive buying right on the other side. Okay. No, initiated buying can can happen inside the value area. Absolutely, um, that's what pulls it out of the vol of the value area. That's exactly what pulls it out. Svetlin, okay, you want to take a look at uh, the um, uh, Mirza? Uh, well, welcome, Mirza. Um, the uh, red numbers signify. Uh, in the COB column. Yeah, this is the iceberg detector. Let me turn on the iceberg detector also for our indicators here, okay? So this was the old way we used to dis uh, display them, so we still do. Uh, it's 59 contracts more uh, volume traded here uh, than what was in the limit order book at that time, okay? But uh, the iceberg detector is now much more improved and enhanced, and you can see it here with the number 
uh, and uh, these are uh, the red numbers are uh, it's more um, aggressive uh, volume that traded here on the, the uh, offer than what was in the book at that time and then uh, uh, it's red because the the icebergs here um, you know they're 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 going uh, they're on the short side um, and then uh, green down here, uh, they're absorbing, but uh, these this, these guys here, they're going to be, uh, you know, uh, with their hidden orders, they're going to be uh, uh, looking for, uh, you know, uh, move to the upside. Okay, that answers that question. Um, we can take a look at quick, we're running out of time here, uh, a quick look at the ES, and let's see, you wanted to look at a specific time, um, low of the day. Not much exhaustion. Uh, well, no. I mean, this is this is a, a more like a V bottom here. This is something very different, uh, and um, uh, this is like a, a flush through uh, into uh, an area. And usually, yeah, you can see that's in usually a, a lot of absorption uh, down into these areas here. And uh, you know, that's kind of what we're seeing. I mean, look at all the liquidity here. Look at that nice, um, you know. Uh, uh, order book and balance right here, very aggressive, very very aggressive. Uh, so uh, this is a this is actually a pretty nice example because look at 202 contracts, nine and a hundred here. Um, you know we we have a lot of icebergs going off. We have this is a a, a pretty pretty significant uh, area here. Look at the uh, order book skew trying to press price uh, lower into some of these uh, larger contracts down here at 72. Uh, and uh, and then we see the initiated buying, and then uh, look at them getting very aggressive here on the other side. Okay, so uh, these guys were aggressive on the offer. Now they're getting aggressive on the bid. Okay, pressing price up into where? Where is it going to go? High liquidity. Okay, looking for high liquidity. Uh, and um, uh, and then look at them build out this area here. Right. Okay. Very, very, uh, very bullish. Um, these are, yeah, this is really significant uh, 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 liquidity. I haven't seen, uh, you know, this kind of, and, and look at how these how these traders, you know, I mean, you can just, you know, that it's uh, larger players here. Um, just by looking at the, the way their algos are, are behaving here. Okay, so that's the ES. Um, so let me, I'm running out of time. Uh, I want to get to all your questions. Um, and we will end on that uh, uh, Apple example. Uh, even if the volume dots are filtered, well, they're filtered, but they're, they're, it's all still in there. Um, the volume bars in the column, um, in, the, in the column, they're absolutely aggregated. Uh, yeah, no, no question there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it depends, uh, it, you know, on if it's a SVP, that's for the entire session aggregated at that uh, at that price level. Yes. OK, so you're talking about these volume columns over here. OK, on my SVP here, my chart range volume uh, profile. Let me not split out the data here. OK, so um, uh, for the chart range, um, oh, I have it on reset as well. Okay, I do not want that. There we go. Okay, so the chart range volume profile is going to give it for just this chart range. Okay, as I zoom out, you can see it's reflected the volume activity in this chart range. Okay. All right. Any other questions? How does this work on NQ? It works great on NQ. Uh, and um, yeah, I mean, here here we go, you know. Uh, in fact, okay, so let's uh, let's jump in and take a look at at Apple here. I mean, look at this return. This is where we broke from here, okay. And there's going to be like a you know, uh, you see the initiated buying in in this area here. We turn right back to where we broke from, and we see them provide high liquidity here, okay. They were here earlier. Okay, and they were also here at this little point here and here. Okay, but uh, uh, right back down here is where we see the change again, and and they're they're still buyers. Okay, and we come back up and test the high. Uh, 
Um, I, Svetlana, I, I don't understand your, your question. What is the HTE clue? Or HFT, I, I don't know what you mean. Um, Okay, I, yeah, beautiful on the NASDAQ. Oh, okay, all right, good. All right, so I covered it for you. Okay, okay, good. Um, well, uh, technically going over uh, initiated buying, I mean, uh, it's initiated buying that uh, uh, usually, uh, uh, well, it depends, but, um, uh, you know, what, what, range what time frame i mean is it the higher time frame uh, if you look at a higher time frame well on a lower time time frame uh, it, you know that initiated buying um, would be in a, d a different range uh if we look at uh, oil here okay let's go over the oil example um you know uh, the initiated buying uh happened at the top of the range here right and that's what you're talking about uh francisco uh and uh, yeah then then uh, you know that is correct Right. But, uh, you know, a lot of times um, you, you'll see it, you know, uh, you'll see a small range within a range uh, and then you'll see that initiated buying. You know, it's what climbs out of that larger range area. Right. OK. OK. All right. Let's end on the tweet uh, from our Twitter account here. I, I haven't taken a look at this. Uh, so uh, let's let's take a quick look. Okay, and uh, and what's your question here? Oh, there's many ways to uh, look for that initiated buying uh, uh, using the uh, chart range volume profile and splitting the data out is one of them, or you can just look for the the large dots and the color of those dots, and and that that immediately tells you. Okay, um, let's see collisions. Well, collision means that um, uh, this is a term that futures trader 71 uses, uh, and uh, it's just high liquidity that collides with the uh, uh, aggressive aggressor uh, buyer or seller. Okay, and uh, you know they, they've met, right? And that area is, is filled. And that, that's what that means. Okay. All right, guys. Um, any any more questions? No, not a retest. Uh, just. Um, uh, transaction. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Well, uh, if there's no more, uh, no more questions and uh, let's wrap it up. Um, and, um, uh, let's see here. Give that uh, 14 day trial period, um, a shot, see if you like it. Uh, and then come to these webinars and ask questions. I'm, I'm happy to go through these, uh, a lot of these, um, uh, features for you in the live market uh, and uh, and show it to everybody as well uh, because there are so many things here to go over in bookmap uh, for example uh, Francisco is talking about initiated buying a lot of traders really like this so they they like to look at their CVP column and they split the data out okay so note note the difference here okay so uh, uh, I can have it as a profile here okay with bars and numbers I can show bars only, I can show numbers only, whatever. Uh, and I can split this out, okay? So if I split it out, because we have the aggressor classification, I can see buyers and sellers, right? And now for that initiated buying, you're looking for this kind of activity here. Let's go over that. We'll just uh, kind of scroll back, okay? So here we are uh, moving along and uh, let's just zoom in a little bit, okay? And then all of a sudden, Okay, we start to note, okay, as price is coming up here, note how, like, um, I mean, this is kind of e equal uh, at the moment, okay? Well, here, here we start to see the, the dots, okay? Uh, and and, you, and you, now you can look directly at the data here, okay? And you want to look at bid versus offer uh, where those transactions are taking place. And you start to see more transactions uh, taking place here uh, uh, you know, with the, uh, with aggressive buying. Okay. And, uh, look at the, look at that, uh, skew now. Okay. And, uh, that's giving you that clue. Well, this is initiated buying, pulling it out of this micro range right here. Okay. 
So a lot of traders would like to look at that specifically right in the order book. We've got it. You can look at the data uh, for volume. You can look at also the trade counter. So this, these are the number of events that took place. Okay. Or I can also look, look at the number of quotes refreshed at that area. Okay. Why would you want to look at that? Right. Uh, well, it's because there's activity uh, and uh, there we're, we're looking for areas and flurries of activity. Uh, and um, I think of it like pit noise. Okay. Uh, and uh, where there's interest uh, in trading. Uh, and uh, that, that's what uh, we want to note. Okay. And uh, the quotes counter can do a real nice job of that as well as showing uh, quote stuffing. Okay. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming. Uh, and uh, let's uh, wrap it up. We'll call it a day and we will catch up with you tomorrow. All right. Yeah. Thanks, guys.